Sugar is is the the basis of our modern world, like the the production of sugar and the money that came out and the use of human bodies to farm this product is what the modern world is built on, is the money that was made out of that industry. If we're gonna unpack our history and go back to the to the root of the, the, the systems that have created what we're dealing with right now in this moment, uh, we have to actually be, we have to be willing to look at that history and grapple with that history and, and its messiness and its complications and its contradictions. Just a little bit about the choreographic lab. This is what we're doing today, is that we're gonna just share a little like pedacito, a tiny little uh, excerpt. We're gonna then ask you to just share what you see um, after we do that, we're going to do a little bit of story circling and sharing some of our own stories around some of the themes that came out and what you saw and some of the themes that we're kind of working on in this piece. Um, while they're getting transitioned, some things that you saw. Time wasn't linear and things were all happening <laughs> consecutively. And I keep hearing um, the truth of the mess or me the mess of the truth or truth is a mess. Like yeah. that was really in my mind at the end. So yeah, from linear to non linear. Beautiful. It was really special to be premiering this piece in North Carolina um, because of my own connection with North Carolina. I was born there originally. My parents met there and got married there. They started their political organizing in North Carolina as part of the union movement there, but also there's a legacy in history that's pretty painful. So to do a piece about healing, to do a piece about <laughs> looking at the history of our country, looking at anti-blackness, looking at the ways in which our country in many ways is incredibly broken. To do this piece in North Carolina felt very loaded and very intense, but also kind of what spirit called for. The piece as a whole it definitely feels heavy at, uh, a lot of the times. It feels, um, I feel like I'm fighting most of the time. It's a fight, but it's at the end of the fight and even in the midst of the fight, there's this like gracious peace. Each of us have a different character and I'd say multiple characters that we um, become and I was really wanting to explore what how I could use anger and rage as a tool and I'm really curious about how that shows up in my own personal and individual life and I was curious to try to explore that in this piece. Like the third um, rehearsal intensive came in, that's when I felt more comfortable. I felt more, um, I knew what I was doing. I was more connected to the work. Everybody else had already been hearing about the work and talking about the work for a, at least a year. So I was like coming into their ideas of what azúcar was. So now I had to find what azúcar was for me. I get really excited about pieces that that don't feel one-dimensional, and Sugar felt so multi-dimensional, like that there were so many entry points that were personal, that were political, that were um, very profound in so many different ways. Uh, I've had a very tumultuous relationship with Sugar my whole life. I definitely, as a person, eat my feelings. Like I love, I love Sugar. Listen, my soul gets nourished every time I eat a honey bun. Okay. However, it's broken down from its natural form. Azúcar is a metaphor for the struggle around colonization. Um, I think that 
there's sugar cane that was beautiful, that was nourishing, and it has been transformed and processed and taken, broken down into something that's poisonous. Even though it still is sweet, it still tastes good. And there was already a beautiful land, a beautiful people that were then broken down, that were then l pulled, um, uprooted, and processed and whittled down. And then and, and systems were built that, okay, yes, it's great to have a job. Yes, it's great to have a house. And yes, it's great that I get to do things and make money off of it. However, there's still um, ways in which it doesn't feel good, ways in which it, um, it, it is killing us. Someone came to our lab who was from Hawaii and told stories about sugarcane in Hawaii and the ways in which sugar farming uh, was used as a, as a weapon in colonization and, and the ways in which that's still happening now. Hawaii developed this method of farming more sugar per acre and processing more sugar than the rest of the world. And, that, and when Hawaii became a state, uh, they also unionized, so it also became the most expensive place to make sugar. So the American businessmen, of course, wanted to make these international deals, and once it became legal to, for them to have businesses and take their businesses to other countries, sugar can die and tourism rose. And then, you know, add to it, of course, indigenous cultures throughout the Pacific, um, changing their diets because of U.S. colonialism and imperialism. And now the need for dialysis um, throughout the islands in the Pacific forces many to migrate to the artistically with a group of people is a very intimate act and this is my first time that I get to be a part of a creative process with the Hoko Tra Tiempo team and to really start from the beginning of having conversations about what this piece is about to be about or what we're going to explore and then really getting to put it into our bodies with each other has really been uh, an amazing experience for us to really get to know each other. Why am I opening up to people? I don't even know. But I think that was the purpose of, that is the purpose of these Choreo Labs is to be in a safe space, in a community where we all hold space for each other. There's no judgment. There's no um, needing to pretend. And that was my moment where I was like, okay, if I was, if I'm able to talk about this, then I'm going to be able to dance through this asukar and dance through these things that I went through in life and bring those things into my movement and make it get deeper and deeper and deeper into like what the work is about. For the half of the life that I've lived so far was in this. I was also born in Chile and I moved to the United States when I was six. Life was so unpredictable all the time. I remember just leaving because I couldn't deal with it. I didn't know what to do anymore. Now, when I talk to my parents about it, they remind me how good it was for me to leave. Because <laughs> that was the drive that I needed to like pursue exactly what I wanted. Azúcar de Peace, I feel, is a remembering of our power, right? Um, a remembering of what our ancestors, right, have left us with 
in order to be able to push forward. Azúcar is a reminder of, of what is possible. When you start to think about the singular, most smallest act and how that can then affect another thing and affect another thing and another person and another person and it becomes this huge web of, of impact, that is what then makes me feel like change is possible. And to understand that, I do it through dance. Azúcar in, in this particular version, in this particular moment, as it continues to grow, um, which is with a, a sound bath. In that space, that, that sound bath moment is what we're moving towards, right? That space of care and wellness and healing and, and how we all need those, not just one moment, but so many moments of those deep inhales and exhales in our lives to reground, to recenter, to reflect on the future that we are saying we want. <laughs>